talk about local businesses and the importance of patronizing local businesses and starting local businesses? Well, there's many reasons. I won't put them all in order, in my opinion. But being a small business person myself, a merchant, uh, I feel that the more diverse your economy is with independent, locally owned and operated business, the more you breed stability. If one or two of these fall off the scene, we've got uh, 10 others to pick up the slack. If we build everything around one golden goose with one golden egg, well, if that golden egg and that golden goose fall, we all fall. And we should have learned that with going exclusively to steel. We should have learned that going exclusively to auto. Uh, we were diverse before that, but everything started relying on these big machines to uh, house us, clothe us, feed us, like the big lone ranger that comes in and saves the day. Well, at some point, and, uh, so it's about diversity, breeding, and stability, as is in the ecosystem. Well, we have a business ecosystem too, and the same thing, it's the same rule of nature applies. If it's more diverse, it's more stable. Um, I don't know why at some point, and we want to look at these pictures as a reference because that's going to inspire what I'm going to say. At what point, Joe, you can probably, would it be easier to leave those up there and let you film these on the wall? I think you can hold them. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look at this, and especially today when everybody wants thriving cities, where we're vitalizing our cities, where our neighborhoods and so forth, okay, everybody wants all this. It's the cool thing to do, to reclaim and rebuild and, and get back to nostalgia and history. <laughs> Yet at the same time, uh, we often forget what it means to actually go into a place and support a business. Okay? And it, I believe they call that now, there's a name for that, where actually you go to businesses and a scene like that, okay? and they call it uh, experiential retail, or an experience to shop. At some point, this is what everything was like downtown, and I'm sure everybody would look at a scene like that today, especially in our mid to small size cities. And probably wish they had that bustle back in the urban core. They wish they had that back besides bars and sports and and just the, the, the eateries, okay? And that was your mall right there. At some point, uh, this became not a good thing. Mega, mega big box stores came by the 70s, 80s, 90s. And suddenly this was not good enough anymore. Okay? Suddenly we are all lulled by the concept that bigger is better, more is better, cheaper is better. And I had a small aquarium shop for years and I faced this way back when and every <coughs> single person who bought into that, uh, what we would say, box mart, etc. mentality had come back to me later to wish that I was still there because they didn't get the service they didn't get the quality, they didn't get the knowledge, so there's more than just point of purchase sale, a cheap price, cheaper isn't always better. There's knowledge, it's how well someone's taken care of after a purchase, it's your quality of product. We've been fooled to think that we're going to get the same quality at these places, but often they are knockoff brands of things that are made by companies we're familiar with, but are inferior, more inferior products. No customer service, as we were talking about a little earlier, no customer service. And I thought the mass exodus to the suburbs, you know, that was the other thing. That was the cool, trendy thing to do. Get your business, get your mall out there in suburbia where everybody is building new houses, bigger houses, and you're right, bigger was considered better. If we had stopped by a uh, sprawl, I would say, of, of uh, the 70s and 80s, okay, if we had kind of stopped that circle right at that point, I think we could have focused more on uh, stability than growth. Okay, and that's something in our economy we never really talk about. We just keep talking about growth. Well, who was it I heard someone say that was a, a sprawl activist or for awareness that said growth beyond maturity is cancer? Yeah, I've heard okay. that too. I, I don't, I don't know who really said it, but if it would have stopped or kind of ceased there and we put a cap on it and let's sustain what we have, 
we wouldn't have this musical chairs of one community robbing from the other, this community benefiting from that, then this leaves this community an empty shell because we stopped, we abandoned that, we built new out here, and we built new out here. And that new stuff in the 80s they built, especially in cities like Columbus, that's rotting out already, and it's obsolete, and we're building out again and again and again. And my question is, how much can this continue? Who wants to live in a place that looks like that? Growth is just consumerism. It's rampant consumerism. It doesn't matter if it's good consumerism or bad consumerism. It's just constantly getting new and and better, not better things, because they're not all better, but it's just constantly getting stuff. We were talking about the electronics, uh, you know, the our phones and everything, and how... How quickly our phones go out of style, you know, how quickly new things come in and these piles and piles of electronics, phones and so forth that exist in places, I don't know where they exist, but can you imagine it? Somebody, some artist did, we're here at the Cleveland Art Museum and there was an artist that actually did a um, real life uh, photo shoot of piles and piles, thousands of old obsolete cell phones just to show you know where we're at with things we're not reusing anything we're dumping it and where does it go you know it's like we say so many times you can't really throw it away well i want you to imagine this okay instead of relying on this big machine to come in yeah and save the day for us I don't believe that strengthens the economy. I, I think it actually cripples the economy because when it falls, as we said, we all fall. And we don't know what to do. We're left with not knowing how to survive, not knowing how to do it. Now, if we all supported our independent business scene more, uh, what I would call, even though we're vegan here, vegetarian, uh, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, you've heard of that, that slogan. If we supported that community in that village, most of the money is going to stay back in there. Everyone's going to be helping everybody else, support them through business, through neighbors. You build connections in your neighborhood. You build community. You build good watch in your community. You build strong communities. You make these connections. We've severed that. And if we supported that scene more than we've been lulled to support this other scene, we would see our neighborhoods thriving, not struggling. We would see jobs creating themselves. We would see us more self-sustaining and stronger, not having to come in and rely on someone to do it for us, give us a job. Kafaro or whomever else, you know, the big the big hitters, the big leagues up there, the developers and the Devardalos and such. We wouldn't have to rely on all that to come in and save the day. We have the power to save it in ourselves, and it just means getting the knowledge to know why we ha we should support this more, even if you have to pay a few cents more. It's so right, too. I think what you say about neighborhoods losing that ability to be cohesive, we lost the trust, we've lost the cooperation. What do we have now is just basically isolation and greediness more consuming, you know, we're by ourselves, we're not connected to our neighbors, we don't know how to interact, everybody's looking at their phones all the time or their laptops, and we've lost that human connection. Mm -hmm. Which are well, the... before that, before the laptops and everything else, when I, I remember going on a train or a bus, everybody had their, pay, their face in the newspaper. So that's that hasn't really changed. It just got electronic. It's just the technology that's changed. Now, know? one of the things I wanted to talk about was the economy of scale. And Chris and I have had a discussion about this before. That uh, you know, uh, local a local uh, merchant, his prices are higher than Walmart or or somewhere like that, or even a regional company. And the reason is economy of scale. Walmart owns their own fleet of trucks. They can deliver anywhere in the world, just about. They can, uh, you know, if, if uh, the local uh, merchant wants to buy something to, to sell in his store, he may only be able to buy 10 of them because for room and everything else. Walmart, they can buy a million of them. <laughs> they get them at dirt cheap. So therefore, it goes into becoming a, they become a predatory merchant. 
they can they can force the little guys out of business. They haven't got a chance. And so therefore, the little guy, I will pay, you know, whatever little bit extra it is for something to keep them in business than I would before I'd ever go to Walmart. Right, and that's what we've got to do, correct? Okay, in our last 30 seconds, how do we fix it? Well, we want to support them more because Sean makes some very interesting points. Um, often when you uh, buy independent, what we're promoting, you actually find out in the long run you've actually paid less. Okay? Because you get a lot that you don't get from the other places. So again, the trick is that in the short term we might pay less, but in the long term we often pay more. Now I can prove that with one equation if you have time to do it. Okay? 15, 10 now, seconds. For example, okay, I'll use one product, Chris's cleaning system. Do you realize that over the long haul to buy the traditional Boxmart system, you're going to probably spend over $5,000 in a 15-year period. With mine, and I did it with the calculator, it's called re Reduction to Ridiculous. It's only going to cost you $1.38 a week to have that for 40 years versus something that's not even going to last five years. So you can't afford cheap. And one book that can educate a lot of us about what we're talking about here is that one by Naomi Klein, The High Cost of Low Price. That is a must read and it'll tell you how we can strengthen ourselves and be freed from this bond that has us going in there and thinking that they are our benefactor. Okay, thank you everyone. We're out of time. See you next time.